Good afternoon. This is the best time of the year for small college football fans. The Division III playoffs begin next week, and we are here to set the 32-team bracket. My name is Jeremiah Johnson. It is an honor to be with you and to share the teams and matchups for the 2022 playoffs. Mary Harden Baylor is your defending champion. The crew knocked off North Central Illinois 57-24 in last year's championship. 27 schools are watching right now knowing they are in as automatic qualifiers, just eagerly anticipating their matchup. 32 team field, this leaves five schools for at-large entrance into the field. Anxious time for those hoping to hear their name called from the at-large pool of teams. This is the 49th season the NCAA has conducted a Division III football championship. The goal for each of the schools you'll see in the bracket to play December 17th at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland. First round play begins this Saturday on campus sites. Before we show you the bracket, we would like to welcome the committee chair, J.J. Nekoloff. He works as his day job with the Old Dominion Athletic Conference, but this weekend he has been busy with the committee putting this field together. J.J., great to see you. Are you breathing a sigh of relief right now? Oh, we're, uh, we're happy to be here, happy to go through the process that we had. Long night for us last night, early morning this morning, but I think we've got a solid bracket and 32 deserving teams here in this bracket that will be an exciting competition, one that's financially viable for the division as well, but we've got some good compelling matchups out there. You mentioned the process. Does the committee first get the 32 teams, figure out the five at-larges, and then go through the bracketing principles? Yeah, we've got to let all the games go ahead and finish out so that we can see who the automatic qualifiers are going to be, look through each of the final rack rankings that come across from the regional advisory committees, and then go ahead and make our choices uh, based on the criteria for those five at-larges that you mentioned. And then we take a look at that, make sure we're shored up with that before we get into bracketing. And then the bracketing piece, of course, we've got a rule this year that we piloted in 2019 that's back in place this year where conference teams cannot play each other uh, inside of the first week of games. We'll get to maybe some specific questions at the conclusion of the bracket. But I did want to ask you, as fans are watching this and student athletes, how much does geography play a factor as you're putting those matchups together? Uh, it plays uh, quite a bit when we're looking at things, and we have to be real about what we've got here from a geographic perspective. Do our best to be true to some of uh, what we're bringing in with the quality of teams, because there's a reason why we go through and do those regional advisory committee rankings. But then again, we still have to go ahead and put a bracket together that uh, makes sense for us from a practicality perspective and have some of those compelling matchups that we're all looking forward to. Much more with JJ after we announce all 32 schools. Let us begin the bracket by showing you the top left corner and the first school that we will recognize this afternoon is St. John's, Minnesota. Nine and one and a first round host. This is the Johnny's 32nd, 28th in Division Three, and eighth consecutive NCAA tournament appearance. St. John's won the MIAC with a 28-10 victory over Bethel. The Johnnies intercepted five passes, two each, by senior cornerback Caden Saxon and sophomore linebacker Cooper Yagi. Junior quarterback Aaron Syverson has completed 63% of his passes, nearly 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns this fall. 13 of those touchdowns going to Alex Larson. Michael Wozniak has 40 tackles, including for 13 for loss and a team leading nine sacks. They will host Northwestern St. Paul in the tournament in the D3 playoffs. Six and four is their record. A 31 to nine victory over Martin Luther Saturday propelled them to the UMAC title and a spot in the playoffs. Caden Cantrell threw for four touchdowns, two of them to Damon Clapper. It's the second D3 playoff appearance for the Eagles. Brad Kalinske has eight and a half tackles for loss to lead the Northwestern defense. Unbeaten Wartburg is in in a first round host. They do it with defense. The Knights broke an 80 year old record for shutouts in a season with five. The old mark was four set back in 1942. This is Wartburg's sixth undefeated regular season in program history. It'll be the first 10 and 0 season since 2017. Hunter Klassen becomes the 18th member of the 1000 yard rushing club in school history. Wisconsin lacrosse is in as one of five at-large selections. They tied for the WIAC title, but head-to-head -head loss to Wisconsin Whitewater meant lacrosse needed help from the selection committee. This was the 34th Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Conference title in school history. Nine regular season wins, most for the Eagles since 2003. 
Congratulations to Matt Janis in his third season as head coach, compiling an 18-4 record. They're averaging 224 rushing yards per game and 214 passing yards per contest. Alma is in, currently having the best season of their program's 128-year history. Defense is stout, allowing just 17 points per game. The offense scoring in bunches behind the play of freshman quarterback Carter St. John and freshman running back Eddie Williams. This is the first postseason appearance since 2004. Incredible atmosphere yesterday at Bulky Field as Alma won a battle of unbeatens, defeating Albion College 34-31. Unbeaten Mount St. Joseph makes the bracket. First NCAA appearance since 2009. The automatic qualifier out of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. A winner-take-all game ended the season Saturday against Rose Holman. It went to the Lions 40-31 in the win. It also capped off that undefeated regular season. You see a 10-0 record. Quarterback Josh Taylor rushed for 149 yards and three touchdowns. Also threw for two more scores. Shout out as well to Cornell Beecham Jr. 145 yards on the ground Saturday. Now we mentioned Wisconsin Whitewater a short time ago. They will get the spotlight now as a host institution in the first round. The 39th conference championship in school history gives Wisconsin Whitewater the AQ spot. Balanced rushing attack for the Warhawks. Jalen Edmondson and Tamir Thomas each have tallied over 600 yards rushing. Evan Lewandowski, a 2,000-yard passer. They have won six national titles in school history. Aurora is their opponent on Saturday. Seventh NCAA appearance for Aurora. Aurora third under head coach Don Beebe. A 42-0 victory against Concordia, Wisconsin Saturday clinched the Northern Athletics Collegiate Conference Championship. And talk about league domination. That's 30 straight NACC wins for Aurora. Jaquay Cretton Trenton has rushed for over 1,200 yards to go along with 12 touchdowns, offense averaging over 50 points per game. We are one quarter of the way through the bracket, still four at-large spots available. Good afternoon, Mount Union. Another school entered the postseason with a perfect 10-0 record. Quarterback Braxton Plunk entered the weekend number two in the country in TD passes. Take a look at this incredible video in the snow. Mount Union's game-winning Hail Mary pass to knock off Baldwin Wallace on Saturday. The automatic qualifier out of the Ohio Athletic Conference, Mount Union entered the weekend number one in total defense, allowing just over 150 yards per game. Mount Union aiming for its 14th Division III title and an amazing win on Saturday. They'll host a game against Salisbury thanks to a thrilling 36-33 win against Christopher Newport. Salisbury is in representing the New Jersey Athletic Conference once again. They rode the back of running back Joey Bildstein. He averaged 239 rushing yards and five touchdowns, or he had that 239 yards and five touchdowns on Saturday. 13th playoff appearance for the Seagulls. They're averaging nearly 350 yards rushing per game. A super Sunday hello to Susquehanna. Capped off an undefeated season and Centennial Conference title with a blowout victory against Juniata on Saturday. Susquehanna is in with a 10-0 record. The party can officially begin on the campus of Utica College. 9-1, best record in school history, leads to an at-large selection and first appearance in the D3 playoffs. Utica's ninth straight win came Saturday, 35-21 over St. John Fisher. Congratulations to the Utica University Pioneers. Randolph-Macon is a first-round host. They prevailed in the 127th edition of the game against Hamden Sydney. Ninth straight win in the series, Drew Campanelle leads the country in completion percentage. And get this, 80%. His favorite target is David Wallace, 880 yards receiving and 10 touchdowns. Randolph-Macon is good as well in clutch situations. Number one in the country in third down conversion percentage. Should be a great first-round game against SUNY Cortland. Despite a loss to Ithaca Saturday, SUNY Cortland is in as the AQ representative from the Empire 8. 11th NCAA appearance for Cortland. The Red Dragons are averaging 510 yards per game of total offense. And defensively, Devin MacArthur leads the team with 55 tackles. Time now to greet those watching at Delaware Valley. Number one team in the re most recent Region 1 rankings. Delaware Valley claimed the fifth consecutive Middle Atlantic Conference Championship. 
second straight undefeated regular season and more league domination here. Del Val has not lost to a conference opponent since 2016. The goal now to win big in the D3 playoffs, 962 yards rushing this season for Jay White. The final school on the left side of the bracket is Gallaudet. Eastern Collegiate Football Conference title for the first time since 2013. After a win against Alfred State Saturday, we are quoting Coach Chuck Goldstein. I'm so proud of this team for what they have been able to accomplish this season. It feels great to bring the ECFC Championship back to Gallaudet University. Now, Gallaudet is the world's deaf and hard of hearing university located in Washington, D.C., led by Brandon Washington, a sophomore slot quarterback who's rushed for 950 yards and eight touchdowns. He's thrown for three touchdowns, also caught three touchdown passes. In fact, in one game, he ran through and passed for a touchdown. Actually, he did that in two different games this season. So there you have half the field for the D3 football playoffs. 16 more schools, including three at-large selections, come your way after this short timeout on NCAA.com. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Thank you for staying with us. Some of you no doubt making travel plans at this moment. Others eagerly anticipating seeing your school on the screen. Let's get back to the bracket. And the next team that we will shine a spotlight on is North Central Illinois. Number one in both polls the last eight weeks posted a school record string of four straight shutout victories. Also, they have outscored their last five opponents 296 to three, having clinched the 16th CCIW championship and 14th NCAA postseason bid in school history, outscoring opponents by nearly 53 points per game. Ethan Greenfield has rushed for nearly 1,400 yards and eight touchdowns. The 2019 champion, 2021 runner-up, North Central, absolutely a team to watch over the next five weeks. Lake Forest is their opponent, 9-1, a hard-fought 13-7 victory at the University of Chicago on Saturday gave the Foresters a share of the Midwest Conference title, earning the league's automatic bid to the D3 playoffs. Defense should keep Lake Forest in every game. They allowed just 71 points in nine conference games this season. Another host institution, unbeaten Carnegie Mellon, capped off a perfect 10-0 season with a 20-7 victory over Case Western Reserve on Saturday. The Tartans own the longest win streak in all of college football, 17 straight. Wide receiver Chris Hughes, 639 yards receiving and six touchdowns. This will be an appearance to savor and appreciate. They were not able to play in the postseason due to COVID-19 last season, leading to a first-round playoff game declared a no contest. How about head coach Ryan Larson getting this group back together and putting together a fantastic season. Second straight NCAA appearance for DePauw. Weekends do not get much better in Greencastle, in Indiana. They are in possession now of the Monon Bell after defeating Wabash in front of a crowd of nearly 8,000 fans Saturday. A rivalry game that also served as a win and get in game for the playoffs. 49 points, the most DePaul has scored in 128 games in that rivalry. Senior quarterback Wally Rennie threw for four touchdowns. Once again, DePaul's second consecutive NCAA D3 appearance. Endicott is in. 10-0 is their record. The Endicott football Twitter account posted this message on Saturday. Great day to be a goal. The goals finished the regular season undefeated for the first time in program history. Now Endicott trailed Western New England 14-0 on Saturday, but rallied with 26 straight points and held on for a spectacular 26-21 victory. Shout out to Hector Johnson, who sets the tone defensively with 14 and a half sacks. Springfield will travel to Endicott, second consecutive NUMAC title for Springfield after a 35-21 victory against Catholic. They'll bring a seven-game winning streak into play next week, eighth NCAA appearance. Springfield likes to keep it on the ground, number two in the country in rushing yards per game. 
Congratulations to Ithaca. Automatic qualification by virtue of an undefeated run through the Liberty League, a great end of the regular season, as well as a victory in that rivalry game against SUNY Cortland. It clinches the perfect season and postseason spot. In that game, quarterback A.J. Wingfield, 18 for 20 through the air, 209 yards and three touchdowns. For the second time in program history, UMass Dartmouth is in. This coming after a first ever MASCAC title, the championship and bid clincher Saturday, 46 to 21, a victory against Plymouth State. Quarterback Dante Avilas Santos, 26 of 29 for 316 yards and three touchdowns. So we are three fourths of the way through the field. Big time suspense for this final quarter of the bracket. Still three at-large selections to be announced. Trinity, Texas is in as an automatic qualifier out of the Southern Athletic Association. The Tigers completed the 10th undefeated regular season in school history. The first since the 10 win season in 2011. Trinity extended its regular season win streak to 20 games dating back to the final game of the spring of the 2021 season. Saturday's victory, the 60th in the career of head coach Jeremy Urban, tying him with Trinity Athletics Hall of Famer Gene Norris, second on the all-time list. One of those at-large spots we reference goes to Harden Simmons, 11th NCAA appearance, a 9-1 record. Saturday's victory over Texas Lutheran, the 500th in program history. A 45-16 win was one final positive impression for that selection committee. Congratulations to Harden Simmons for this at-large selection. Mary Harden Baylor is in and a host. The 2021 national champions on your screen there, nine and one, their record this season. Saturday's victory, actually 20 years as the school's defensive coordinator, Larry Harmon, experiencing a successful first season as head coach. Their only loss this season was to Wisconsin Whitewater. Quarterback Kyle King has thrown for 31 touchdown passes. Mary Harden Baylor will meet Huntington, the USA South champions for the fourth year in a row, a 55-7 victory over LaGrange on Saturday. Coach Mike Turk said our mindset for playoffs is to keep playing. When you're in that situation, the only way you get to keep playing is to win. We've been fortunate enough to do that. We're going to enjoy this and get ready for the playoffs. The drama is building. Congratulations to at-large selection and a first-round host, Wheaton, Illinois. 593 yards of total offense for the Thunder, and it wins Saturday against North Park. Wheaton is outscoring opponents 45-17 to this season. Giovanni Weeks has rushed for 1,100 yards and 15 touchdowns. Wheaton defeated Aurora in a first-round game in the 2021 D3 playoffs before falling to Central in the second round. We'll see if the Thunder can make some noise in 2022. And it will be a battle of at-large selections in this first round. A final at-large spot goes to Bethel. The Pilots lost to St. John's in the MIAC title game 28 to 10. But the second ranked team in the most recent Region 6 rankings can breathe easy this afternoon. Congratulations to Bethel on an 11th NCAA appearance. One more game to show you. It'll feature two schools who knew they were in. The host is Linfield, 9-0, 21st undefeated season in program history. Led by sophomore quarterback Blake Eaton, he's thrown for 2,300 yards and 28 touchdowns. Linfield is confident about its chances to make a deep playoff run. The Wildcats making the program's 12th NCAA appearance in the last 13 seasons. Congratulations to Linfield. And last but not least, a first time participant as well, Pomona Pitzer. The Sagehens celebrated winning a share of the first SCIAC championship in program history after their 28 14 win over CMS Saturday. Such a special weekend as now Pomona Pitzer can look forward to this first ever appearance in the D3 playoffs. Skyler Nobles, a dual threat quarterback, throwing for 2,300 yards, rushing for 773. So there you have it. At this time, we would like to welcome back J.J. Nekoloff, the committee chair for the NCAA Division III football tournament. You knew the field. Now that you've seen the bracket and heard a little bit more, um, your initial thoughts on the five at-large selections, maybe speak as a group, Bethel, Hardin-Simmons, Utica, Wheaton, and Wisconsin lacrosse. 
Well, I think we've got teams that are deserving, as we have with the AQs that are going through. Good resumes for each of those. Some victories in there that that really made a difference uh, with the committee here coming through. But I think it it helped create some good matchups that we have there as well. Uh, so I think we've got a good bracket here to work through. It's been an exciting Division Three season with the regular season, and I can only think that the the tournament is going to be an extension of that, a complement to it. And we hope that you know we see those come through with the results from those games, and look forward to welcoming two teams to Annapolis uh, in December. Results against Division Three opponents, Division Three strength of schedule, results against regionally ranked opponents, head-to-head -head competition. How do you factor all of the criteria to make your choice? Well, I mean, that's the process here. We got to look through each of those as those are our primary functions to go through. And if we if we work through those and work the numbers, work the matchups here and find them and take the uh, take the input coming in from all members of our committee, uh, we've been able to work through it and come up with some good selections here to complete this bracket. There are teams that, you know, are out here that probably are hoping that they would have gotten in the tournament. And there are times when you look at it where you're leaving some good teams at home, but I think we've got 32 deserving teams here in this bracket and we're ready to compete it and see what comes about when we get to Annapolis in the middle of December. Final thoughts, JJ, you are the committee chair, but you're also a football fan. What are you most looking forward to over the next five weeks? Yeah, well, this is uh, this will be my 15th Stag Bowl, having hosted 12 of them with the Old Dominion Athletic Conference with Salem. So I'm looking forward to uh, this one kind of culminating my process here with the committee as this is my fourth and final season. I think we've had a great process through uh, even the orientation with the regional advisory committees coming on to uh, the ranking committee here, the championship committee, working until about 2 a.m. last night, getting back at it at 7.30 a.m. this morning. And uh, really enjoyed the process going through it each of uh, each of the years that I've been here on this committee, the three or four years that I was on a regional advisory committee before that. So it's an illuminating process when you go through it. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what we have when we play this bracket out starting next weekend. Well, congratulations, JJ. Get some rest and enjoy the D3 playoffs. Thank you, sir. The first round of the championship will be played November 19th. First round games at host institutions for an alternate site approved by the football committee. The Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl, the national championship game, will be played Friday, December 16th at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis, Maryland. That game will be broadcast live on ESPNU at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We thank you all for watching the Division III Football Selection Show. I'm Jeremiah Johnson. Best of luck to all the student athletes competing in this year's event. There's an energy swelling out beyond the limits of your expectations. A universe where fandom reigns supreme. Once you're in it, it changes you. Instead of one of one, you're one of many. A blissful sea of chaos. Go beyond your limits and enter the NCAA universe. Get your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets.